Hey everybody, seems like people enjoyed watching my go bag or bug out bag video and I was working on um, restocking my trauma bag and so I thought I'd do a video on trauma bag. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. First thing I want to talk about is the purpose. Um, if, if you have a first aid kit, if you have a emergency preparedness kit, if you have a trauma bag, what is the purpose? What What is your main objective with that? Um, because there are a million different kits and a million different ways to set up a kit. Um, so where are you going to have it? What do you want in it? What are you using it for? Um, my personal preference is using and setting up trauma bags. Trauma bag because I am at the range a lot, I am at shooting competitions a lot, and the type of injuries that I feel that I'm going to encounter the most are those gunshot, those trauma type um, injuries. And so that's what I designed my bag for. If you go on Amazon or Walmart or any of those other sites, you can find just general first aid kits and you can find the basic, cheap little, has five things in it, up to four, five, six hundred item, big, huge kits that they call EMS kits. Um, and that's great if you want a general kit, but even that, if you're buying a kit that is pre-set up, understand that not everything in there is probably going to be the highest quality and it's going to have a lot of stuff that you may not need or things that you may not even know how to use. Um, and I am by no means a EMS or paramedic. Um, I'm just the average Joe. Um, I am first aid and CPR certified, but that's it. And so I don't concern myself with a lot of that stuff that I don't know how to use because if I don't know how to use it I'm more of a danger having it in my kit. Um, so different types of kits. The the trauma kits that, that I like to have is I like to have something on my belt. Um, typically I don't run a chest rig, I run a belt, um, duty belt for my matches or a three gun belt and so I like to run something on my belt um, that is very very basic um, because I'm just looking at what do I absolutely need I don't want a huge big bulky item on my belt so I went through a few different types of things with belts um, I carried this on my belt for a while uh, the problem with having this on my belt is I had it on my belt and of course it's just a cheap um, little IFAC or, or individual first aid kit a lot of people call them um, trauma bag but it kept ripping all of the seams are ripping out on it um, because it would catch every time I got in or out of my vehicle things like that because when I'm running a match I take my vehicle with me because my large trauma kit is in my vehicle and so I'm taking that from stage to stage and I'm driving back and forth. Um, it's easier just to hop in and go another 50 yards, 100 yards down the, the range and leave my belt on. But the issue is these all rip out. Um, so I use this for a long time. Um, this is like my third or fourth one. They rip out. I get a different one. They rip out. I get a different one. It's a nice compact size. I can fit um, enough stuff in here without it being overloaded. Another style that I've used in the past, this one's new so I haven't used it, but this style has is a breakaway style so it's got the velcro. You can attach this to your chest rig or your belt and then you can unvelcro it and break it away if you need to. Um, I use this for a little bit but it's bigger than this one. Not by a ton but it is a little bit bigger and to me it was just a little bit too bulky. For my belt, uh, the latest thing that I'm running is just this little tourniquet kit. Um, 
It's got a place for some trauma shears and then it's got a place for a tourniquet. Um, right now I'm running a Israeli bandage or a compression bandage in it instead of a tourniquet. I've been going back and forth with what's best. Is it best if you're just going to carry this minimal item on your belt, should you carry a compression bandage or should you carry a tourniquet? Um, I don't have room in this for both. Um, and so I've been going back and forth and, and I kind of settled on a compression bandage just for the fact of this is more versatile to me. Um, if somebody's lost a limb or something like that where you absolutely need a tourniquet, this probably is not going to suffice. But for the most majority of trauma that I'm going to see at a shooting competition, this is more um, useful for me to wrap and compress on, on a wound until I can get to either some kind of emergency services or even just to my car where I do have tourniquets. So if I have this on and it's not enough and I need a tourniquet, I've got several in my vehicle which isn't that far away. Um, so that's why I chose this um, and I chose it because it's so small. It runs, you can throw it on on your vest on mole but you can also run it on your belt this way and it's nice and thin. We'll see how long it holds up. This is just a cheap little, I think five or six bucks item. It's a Vism or NC Star Vism, which it's not the highest quality, but it's better than spending a hundred bucks on something that's gonna break on me. Might as well test it on a $5 thing that, that may break on me. So this is what I'm currently running. Um, I like this just for the, the compact size of it. It doesn't seem to get caught up for me as much as the bigger ones. When we're talking about vehicles, I always have my vehicle at the range, like I said. Um, and so I have a large trauma kit in my vehicle. My large trauma kit that I have in my vehicle, I did not buy a set up trauma kit. I just bought a bag and filled it with my own supplies. That way I could customize it to what I thought I needed. and the types of materials that I needed I knew were of the quality I wanted. In my vehicle at every match that I'm running I always keep my vehicle with me. Um, my vehicle has a sign right on the side of it that says trauma bag and I explained that in the safety briefing. So this is my trauma bag that I keep in my vehicle. Like I said, it's a larger bag, but it's not huge. It's easy to grab and go if you need to. The other thing I keep in my vehicle all the time is this emergency preparedness kit. Um, it's, it's a Rescue First brand um, emergency preparedness and first aid kit. I think this was like 25 or 30 bucks on Amazon. Um, this is a pack that I just bought. It has all the stuff in it. I like this in my vehicle just for the general first aid stuff. If I need a general kit, this is my go-to. Um, it's nice, small, compact. It's got a little bit of everything. Like I said, you're going to have some cheap junk in here, but realistically it's better than having nothing. It's also light enough and portable enough that if I'm going hiking or hunting or something and I feel I may need my first aid kit or emergency preparedness kit, I can just throw this in my day bag. The reason I like this brand is everything's separated in here. You get a lot of kits where you just open it up and everything's stuck in there and you have no idea what's where because it's all just jumbled up. This is one big bag that's separated for emergency preparedness, emergency preparedness, small cuts and burns, medium cuts, burns, and severe bleeding, protection and CPR, and instruments. So that's what's in each of these bags, and they're bags that you can take the top off of them, but otherwise they're sealed. So they're individual bags that are sealed, and it's nice because you can go to whatever bag you want 
depending on your needs, and just take out that stuff. I've used these a few times. When you use them, I've found it's easier just to buy a new one. Then you've got some extra supplies versus trying to restock this. Um, just buy a new one. And then keep the extra one so that you can resupply it if you need to. But this is my main trauma bag. Um, my main trauma bag on the front and the top and the back. It says trauma bag so it's easy to tell. It's red. Um, when you're talking about trauma bags or first aid kits, um, I like the red or the blue that has the big sign on it. I don't like having a black or a, a olive green or OD or FDE or any of that kind of stuff, color bag, um, the tactical type stuff, just because I want people to instantly recognize, oh, this big red bag, that's first aid, that's trauma. Um, the other thing that I do in this one is I've got the center section, I've got two side sections. So this bag was off of Amazon, it was like 12 bucks. In my general section, I just keep general supplies, so I labeled it general supplies. On one side, I've got my Israeli wraps or, or compression bandages. In my other side, I've got my tourniquets. My shears and forceps, don't know how to spell shears obviously, and CPR masks and gloves. That way if you know what you need, it's labeled right there for you. So Israeli wraps, I keep a few of them. I've got a couple four inchers, I got a six inch. Um, I really like Israeli wraps because they're so versatile. Tourniquets and shears and that kind of stuff. Um, I've got a whole big bag full of different gloves. I like the nitrile gloves. They seem to hold up better than those cheap vinyl ones. I got another set of trauma shears. Again, I'm buying higher quality stuff, so these are nice quality trauma shears. It's the same thing that I'm running in this, just a different color handle. I've got several CPR masks. Um, these are just those cheap CPR masks that's got the film, square film on it with the, the little mouthpiece in it. Um, they're really cheap and realistically a CPR mask is going to be a one and done anyway. Once you use it you're going to throw it away. So I don't spend the money on the big ones in the, in the orange cases or anything like that. I just buy a bunch of these. It's a lot cheaper and they work. Um, I got a Kelly forcep in here just in case for some reason you may need it. And then I've got tourniquets. I've got a couple different size tourniquets. It's helpful when you have tourniquets to have more than one because what if one isn't going to be enough and you need to apply more more pressure. If you don't have a second tourniquet then you're you're working on devising your own. Um, so I've got three tourniquets, I've got two different styles. I've got cat tourniquets and I've got a rat's tourniquet. Uh, personal preference, I know there's a lot of stuff out on the internet about what tourniquet's best and I think a lot of it is more personal preference than anything. Um, but I've got a couple different styles. In my general supplies, I've got a splint. The only reason I've got a splint in my trauma bag is because I couldn't get it to fit in here and it doesn't have a splint in here and I thought a splint would be nice. Um, otherwise, my trauma kit, and I keep everything in individual bags, that way, it, and they're labeled, that way it's easy just to grab whatever bag you want out without cross-contaminating everything. So I've got um, abdominal pads or tampon pads they call them. These are nice big pads for sopping up blood. I've got bandages. I've got a whole big bag full of bandages. Um, probably not going to be used so much in trauma but it's nice to have in here that way if there are smaller cuts and that kind of stuff I can just grab a bandage out of here out of this bag instead of ripping open this. 
if I needed at the range. I've got rolled gauze, and these rolled gauze, I double bag, so I throw them in these little snack size sandwich bags, um, or Ziploc bags, snack size Ziploc bags, and two packs. Um, and then I have several of those in here, that way, because they're not individually wrapped, it makes it easier for cleanliness. But I got several rolled gauze. I got several different types and sizes of flat gauze. So I got two by twos, two by threes, four by fours, and flat gauze. I got a bunch of different types of tape. And so I've got just general tape rolls. I've got waterproof tape rolls, different sizes, half inch, one inch tapes. I've got a couple burn shields in here um, because it may not be that somebody, their trauma isn't that they got shot, but maybe they got burnt. Maybe gases out of the muzzle or something burned them. I've got burn shields. I got a couple high fins, which are chest seals. Um, these are nice. I've never had to use them, luckily. Um, but I've heard and read that the, they are nice for sucking wounds, um, so sucking chest wounds, it's nice to have a chest seal. And finally, I've got a whole bunch of these alcohol prep pads. Um, alcohol prep pads, I don't really see using as much in the middle of doing a trauma care, um, but they are nice afterwards to help clean yourself up until you can get to a proper wash station. So I don't have a ton of other extra supplies in here. This is the main trauma style materials that I have. I find if you have too much stuff, and as far as variety of stuff, then it gets too cluttered and you can't find everything. These are just the basics. But I have enough in here to cover pretty much any situation. Um, if you're going to carry stuff like this, carry more than one. Carry multiples of the abdominal pads, carry multiples of different gauze, because if something fails or something doesn't work or you need more, then you've got it in your bag. So that's my trauma bag. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, hopefully you got a little bit out of it. Thanks for watching.